Hey guys, welcome to 2C Vids. Today I'm going to talk about the Romanian SCR1, which is this one here, and then the Egyptian Mahdi, which is this rifle right here. I like both of them, but one thing I will go over real quick, and I guess you can't really see it too well. Let me adjust my camera. You can see the difference already. That's the first thing I want to go over. The Mahdi is a little bit taller here. Reason being is because of the stocks. This, the Egyptian Mahdi, has a NATO stock attached to it. And I happen to like that better. I'm 5'7". It just fits me a little more comfortably. And, it, and again, it's a preference thing. It's not that one's better than the other at all. Now, the SAR-1 is shorter. So, like I said, again, I'm 5'7", so when I hold the rifle, you know, my nose is about right here, about that close to it, just to be able to look through the sight on the back. So, but I guess first things first, before I touch any of them, I'll just do a quick clear out. It's clear. Clear. Okay, so once again, these rifles here, they are both post band rifles. So I'm going to kind of leave them right here to, to kind of discuss them a little bit. Let me get that back in the frame there. So <clears throat> what this means is that you can't put a bayonet on. To me, no big deal. Don't care. Have absolutely no desire for one. I don't need one. You see a lot of guys complain, oh, I can't get a bayonet on it or whatever. You know, it's all a preference thing, but I do a lot of target practice for these things, so I don't... Uh, I really don't need a bayonet. It just does nothing but get in my way. So for me, to, it's not that big a deal if I can't put one on. So you can see that this is, uh, this is actually, this piece here is welded onto the Mahdi. So it's tack welded. So yeah, you can get it off. Probably take a Dremel tool, take grind it down. I mean, it's, it's not tack welded very well. It's just enough so you, you can't get it off. And, you can, and it's reverse thread. If there is threads underneath it, I'm betting there is. I don't know for sure. But you can take it off like that. And uh, you could probably put a slant brake on there, whatever you wanted to do. Um, once again, something I don't require. But these sites are both candid on them, and I'll go over that in another video. But anyways, uh, so the Romanian, the SAR-1, if you look at it here, this has a smooth end barrel, so it's not even threaded. But there's all kinds of guys out there, like machinists or whatever, they can they can put threads on there for you. And you can, you can put a uh, slant brake on there. Uh, muzzle brake, anything you wanted to do, um, all kinds of stuff out there, like add-ons and all that crap you can put on. But, and again, this head, just like the Mahdi, it's ground down right here, so if you did get a bayonet on there, it's not going to stay. So those are probably the two biggest things on it. But one of the, I prefer the Mahdi uh, just because it's beefier. I mean, just, it just seems a little bit more better constructed. But, um, and I'll put these up here so you can get a better look at them, but... Not to discredit one or the other, man. I mean, it's an AK, you know. So if you, <laughs> I mean, if you shoot a lot, then you want something that's going to be reliable. Then I would, I would definitely consider an AK. And these, these magazines are not loaded, by the way. I'm just inserting them so that way you guys can get a better look at them. Uh, oops, there we go. So get up there now. Okay. You can see those. So these two here, the finish, the finish is not bad for a Mahdi on this one. I was pretty surprised when I, you know, when I got it. And I got both these rifles on Gunbroker, believe it or not. So probably be the last time I ever do that too. Um, there's some things I'll go over as well, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was surprised. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm going to leave the furniture alone. You know, I just want something that because it. A lot of guys, you know, they like to go out and shoot, and then you just throw the rifles right back in the safe or whatever. I, I clean mine every time and lube them up, so I've never had one issue with rust or anything like that. And where I live, it's a very dry climate, so there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, problems with that here. So Now, the SAR-1, the finish is obviously it's a different, it's like a, a flat black compared to, this is almost like a glossy, but um, it doesn't matter anyway. I don't know if I talked about it earlier, but what I am going to do... With the furniture on this one, is I'm going to actually strip it all off, strip the uh, the finish off, 
and I'm going to give it the Russian red look. And I got to know a guy here, he's a gunsmith, he's really good, he's a little bit slow as far as getting your rifle back and all. He's actually going to Cerakote it for me, so you're probably asking, yeah, why are you doing this to an SAR-1? Well, it's actually going to be a retirement gift for my father here. He's going to retire in about the next year or so. I don't plan on getting this rifle back for about um, two to three months once I go to get it Cerakoted. So, um, but that's what the plan is with that. But um, my dad, he's about the same size as me. Uh, so he might, I might actually, I ordered another stock set that I wanted to refinish anyways, but it has a NATO stock set on it. So I think I'm going to put that on the, on the butt stock here and just leave these two up. So um, one of the main differences between these two rifles that I have was the, uh, the sight apertures on the rear. You'll notice here, this is your typical standard issue AK sight on the back. Uh, if you've ever used one before, they're a little bit difficult. They can be because it's hard to get eyes on your target downrange. So what I did on the Mahdi is I went ahead and put on a peep sight on the back. I don't know if you can see it there. There you go. Kind of see what I'm talking about. To me, I prefer those. It was like that's the only money I've dumped in this rifle. It was about sixty bucks, sixty-five or something like that after shipping. I can't remember. So, um, yeah, these things are uh, extremely reliable. That's for sure. I haven't had any issues with them at all. Luckily, I live in a state where you can have the thirty-round mags. That's kind of nice, especially when you're out on the range. Like where I live here, it's cold, so constantly putting rounds down into a mag gets make, <laughs> turns into a a real long afternoon out on the range, so that's why I like the 30 round. 10 rounds, nice for sighting in though, but um, like I said, both of these have canned sights on them, so I remember the first time, you can, you'll know it's canned and you get sight tools and stuff to when you're out on the range to start adjusting. But you can look, get a better shot there. Now you can see how the, the middle sight is pushed all the way over to this side over here. So, and I'm still hitting six to eight inches off center of the target at 50 yards which is horrible so but I've, I've learned to deal with it and just manage it but I'll go over that how to check for cannon sights here in another video but me personally I mean both of these weapon systems they're whether they're a Mahdi or a SAR-1 both pretty reliable you know when I first started getting into AKs I had a lot of questions there's really not a whole lot of difference between them I mean really the furniture is going to be the big one really but I mean they, you know they function well so I've never had any issues with them but um, feel free to throw some comments in there some other stuff that uh, you'd like to see me do with these I would like to I'll go out and sh I'll make one more shooting them and we'll go over that and I'd really like to show you the before and after for the fixing these canned sites down here so other than that uh, thanks for watching 2C vids and we'll catch you next time